All right, folks, let's work on our crafting system. So to do this, we're just going to add something to our item info structure. So I've double clicked, open it up, and I'm gonna add a variable. Very first one is gonna be a Boolean that's asking, is this a craftable item? Now the way we're gonna do the, the learning of crafting recipes this time, since we've bought spells, we've bought items, and all that jazz, I thought it'd be cool to have it to where we uh, learn them based on our player's level or a crafting level. Uh, I'm going to be implementing a crafting level, but if you just want to bind to the player's level, you'll do just the same thing, but just swap out crafting level for bind, uh, player level. So it's the next variable I'm going to add. After we find out is it craftable, then we want to add is it what its recipe is. Now the base variable is going to be our base interactable class reference and this one is going to be a map because we'll need to know how many of it we need. So we'll be able to set how many items we want and how many of each item for each recipe. Now the next thing I'm going to add is a boolean that, because in mine uh, I'm just going to have one, two types of items things that can be crafted in the field and things that need to be heated or cooked. Uh, you can add as many different types of crafting stations as you like. You could set up an enumerator with like a smithy, uh, what, sawmill, I don't know, whatever you wanted, and then have each of those apply it. I'm just going to set up the one that's just called fire needed question mark set this back to singular and to a boolean craftable recipe fire needed oh and then we'll need level required which will be an integer to check our level against its level required and then for the final one is going to be crafting xp and this will be a float and this will be how much experience the thing is worth. Once you craft it, you get that much experience. So with all that done, I'm going to come back out and save right here. Now we need, once we update this, we need to update our item info data table. So that you can actually tell it which items you want to be craftable. So for my health and mana potion, I'm going to set that they are craftable. For the health potion, it's going to require five green herbs doesn't need fire I'm gonna leave the level required to zero and it'll be worth five experience to craft for the mana potion is craftable recipe will be two green herbs and a health potion because I don't have much in my craft in my items list yet I'll probably expand on this and in a future video for anybody who wants to see the process of going through. It'll be one of those skippable videos though. Let's see, level required zero because they'll have it right off the bat, also worth five experience. Now, since we've altered our item info struct, there is a few things we need to do to our player character, which I'm gonna save real quick again because I tried recording this a minute ago and my, my engine crashed, but I think I fixed the issue. So what we want to fix in this real quick is our pick up item function and our remove item function because right here where we're adding the item to our inventory we want to go ahead and connect all these wires. It won't really affect anything because this is all behind the scenes kind of stuff and won't be accessed in game per se but it's just good practice to make sure that everything syncs up the way it's supposed to. So when I say behind the scenes, I mean like the crafting recipe is not something you'll interact with necessarily in the game. Like you won't go into the menu and then pick one of the items. I'm not, I'm not explaining this well. It being blank wouldn't affect your ability to craft it is what I'm trying to say. The way we're going to set it up. But it's just good practice, like I said. 
So now back out in the interaction system, I'm going to right click and create a new folder called Crafting SYS. This is, this is, no, I don't need to do that. I need to create a HUD element. I'm sorry, it's like 5 in the morning. Hopefully this comes out alright. <laughs> so I'm going to set up a crafting screen underscore W. And it, like all others, will be wrapped with a scale box and a size box. The size I will default 1920, 1080. Then I'm going to add oh, a canvas panel to my canvas panel. I'm going to anchor it to the left side and then reposition it where I want it. So let's say 300 by 500. I know I go pretty fast through this part, but uh, I figure y'all y'all know this part well enough. Y'all should be able to, or y'all don't want to see me have to slowly meander through it. Reset all my offsets. Black 0.75. Now I can drag this up just a little bit. One of the tricks I've started doing is I drag this up just a little bit and then I drag a text block onto the canvas panel, anchor it to the center top, set its alignment to 0.5 on the X and its offset back to zero, position Y zero. Then what I can do is I can move this up a little bit. Well, actually, you could just go on the Y and go to 1. Drop this back down a little bit, and then it perfectly lines up for it to be our crafting list. Well, once you go down to the justification and center it up. But yeah, it looks nice. Not, you know, not great. But it'll work for what we need, yeah? Alright, so let's go Add a uniform grid panel. Negative, negative Ghost Rider. We need two scroll boxes. So I'm going to bind one to the top all the way across. Offset left 25. Position Y 25. Offset right 25. Size, what did we set this thing to? canvas panel it was like 500 okay so I'm gonna set this one to 250 that oh no I gotta be 225 because I'm coming in 25 well let's do 200 because I'm gonna have to just come in on this side also I don't want some gap between them so this is going to be what holds my uniform grid panel for my main crafting items, so things I can craft in the field. So this will be base crafting menu that is a variable and that is aligned left. Then I want, let's see, five across the board for the padding. Now I can just duplicate this. And for this one, I'll anchor it to the bottom. Offset left 25, offset right 25, position Y negative 25 because we're moving up. Now this will be my cookables. Cookables. That's a. Yeah, that's the word I'm going with. Alright, so this will be filled with all my items that I'll be able to craft in the field, and this will be filled with all my items that were only available to craft at a fire pit. So now we need a crafting icon. We're only at 10 minutes. Yeah, we'll make this just a little bit longer, and then we'll, we'll move on to the next part. So, user interface, widget blueprint. This will be the crafting icon underscore w 
and I'm going to change it to desired on screen. Set my button on the canvas panel. And set its size to 75 by 75. And you can add a text block if you like. I'm not going to this time. Um because we're just I'm just going to add the image, but if you do add the text block, then you'll just set the name just like we did in all the other icons. Alright, so I am going to add a variable called item info that will be an item info structure reference, and then with this variable selected, I'm going to say it's instance editable and expose on spawn. So now an event construct, I want to get my button and I'm going to set style. Oop, ah, grab that. All right. Then I'm going to make style. Grab out my item info, drag it over here, break it open. From the normal, I'm going to make slate brush, which I don't think you have to type. You can just yeah, make slate brush item image into the image and then this into the pressed also from the hovered same thing make slate brush plug in our item image and from tint we want to make slate color and set that to point one give it a nice dark gray when you're looking at it now if you have a text if you've added a text to yours don't forget to name it set that it's a variable and then on this side you'll drag it out set text of text and then you'll just set that item name right there so with all that done we can in the next one start setting up all the internal stuff so I'll see y'all in a bit for that one bye bye